Today's artist is pretty much the typical tale of a child star, an R&B singer with an undeniable talent, Mario, who was discovered at the barely teenage years of 14 and quickly signed to J Records. The ups and downs of his life, while not as juicy as the excessive beefing of rappers, are full of unexpected twists and turns and today we will follow him through his career from its very beginning through his four released albums before 2010 which were all varying degrees of successful and painted the image of a squeaky clean artist. Next came a slew of unexpected behavior around 2010. Mario is known for dropping one major hit and then disappearing off the map. So the question is, what happened to Mario? What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. Mario was born around 1986 in Baltimore, Maryland. Growing up in the fairly working class West Baltimore, Mario's upbringing was pretty standard. His father was a singer in a gospel group while his mother, Shantia Hardaway, was a single mother and a struggling heroin addict, resulting in his upbringing being centered within his grandmother's house. In addition to his father's musical contribution, Mario knew early on that he was going to be a singer, proclaiming the fact at the age of four, and even pushing his mother to purchase him a karaoke machine. My mother heard me singing and at first she thought it was the radio playing loud. When she came downstairs, she was shocked when she realized that it was me. He soon learned to play piano, using the skill as the bass for his melodies and entering talent shows when he was just a young kid. When I did my first talent show. Right. And, 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 and how old are you like, at that time? Like elementary school, fifth grade. Right. Right. When you were a kid and all the kids that like, you know, you fighting with and all of this stuff going on, but they had the talent show going crazy over you now. Do you remember right? what song it was? So guess what? I'm going to tell you. You know Monique, right? Yes. Oh, so I know her this. son. I was in a group with her son. Yeah. And we did a talent show in Baltimore. And she put it like, she got us dressed, we got us suits, and we sung, um, I think we sung like, Can, Can You Stand the Rain or something. New like Edition? That. Can New you Edition, stand? something yeah. like that. Crazy. Killed the talent show. From that mo moment forth, I knew it was like, okay. What did you feel at that moment? By the age of 11, he had been discovered and signed by producer Troy Patterson after taking part in a local talent show. He remained in school, going to the public high school Milford Mill Academy where he joined a musical group and continued to attend until the 10th grade. He then landed a 7 album deal with Clive Davis's J Records at the ripe age of 14. Yeah. And then that's when uh, Troy Patterson, I guess, discovered you? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And signed you to, to J? Yeah. And Third so, Street J Records, yep. Okay. So then he became, he adopted you or? Yeah, I was actually adopted by him, and um, I lived there in Jersey for like four years. From there, his career took on a life of its own, and quite a successful one at that. Mario's official debut was recorded around 2001, when he was still 14, and comprised of a feature on Fabulous's song, Tamika, from the soundtrack of Dr. Doolittle 2. Though the song was technically his first introduction into the industry, it was done with very little fanfare and he was first shown off to the rest of the music world later in the year after he performed a cover of Stevie Wonder's song, You and I, at Clive's Grammy party around 2002. In love, you and I. Mario had been quietly working on his debut album since around 2001. The self-titled offering was officially released around July of 2002 to rather mixed critical success. The album also performed well on the charts, making it number 9 on the Billboard 200 and spawning three singles like Just a Friend, Braid My Hair and Come On. All three singles did amazing things for Mario's career, but it was just a friend that truly stuck out as the star of the show. Now, uh, the first single, um, the remake of, of Bismarck, he's 1989 classic, right? Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Was that, was that Clive Davis? Well, actually, it was a 
and uh, by the name of Peter Ants who let me hear the track because they had been talking about me a lot to different producers and, and we got this new 15 year old artist coming out we need a you know a hot singer for him so a uh, producer by the name of Warren Campbell and Harold Lilly they sent in just a friend and uh, as the first time I heard the song I was like man look this is my first single I need this song right here um, I'm in the studio I recorded it and after we recorded it after the album you know was almost done. Biz came and he did the remix to it. Now, I didn't hear his version of his Just a Friend until about three months ago. For the first time I heard it, a lot of people be like, oh man, I keep forgetting he's a young dude. You know what I mean? But you know, I try to understand that. Um, Biz came in, he did it. We had a lot of fun in there too. Real cool. He did the video with me. For his next project, Mario wanted to appear to be more grown up. And so, he enlisted several well-known producers, including Scott Storch and Little John, to create his second project. It was titled Turning Point, and detailed his transition from a kid into a man. The album would go on to be the most successful of his career, and would spawn his most successful single to date. Released around 2004, the album was an international success, and even went platinum. The first single on the project was called Let Me Love You. If I was your man, baby, you never worry about what I do. I'll be coming home back to you. Now, when this song came out, it was massive. The song was so successful that a remix followed, featuring rappers T.I. and Jadakiss. Now, I won't lie, when this song came out, I hated it. Now, don't get me wrong, the song is actually pretty good. The only thing is, I didn't like the message, you know? If you're a guy in a relationship with a girl that you really like, then Mario is the type of guy that you want far away from your girl. When you're having a tough time with your girl, Mario is the type of guy that would show up and say something like, Baby, you should let me love you. Let me be the one to... Bro, get the f*** out of here. I won't lie, I hated this song, but sonically, I can't deny that it was a hit. Of course, you got the new album dropping December 7th. Mm -hmm. Right, right? The single right now is yeah. hot. Let, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm just so I'm just so into this right now. Let me love you. That's what the, the, the hot single is off the album. Can you just drop a little something? Because, I mean, I'm just so into that song right now. Okay. <clears throat> Baby, I just don't get it. Do you enjoy being hurt? I know you smell the perfume, the makeup on the shirt. By comparison, the three follow up singles around 2005, How Could You, Here I Go Again, and Boom were all complete flops. Well, except for the song How Could You. At least that one made it to the Hot 100. Now perhaps mainly due to his rising success and growing popularity, fans soon began to draw comparisons between Mario and R&B superstar Usher. Those comparisons began to evolve into supposed beefs between the singers in chat rooms across the internet. In response, Mario said the following, People making out that Usher and me are rivals annoys me. We're not. I don't mind if girls compare us though. I think it's a big compliment. Now I do remember the Usher vs Mario conversation. When I spoke to other people about this topic, most of them chose Usher over Mario simply because Usher is a better dancer. Mario can dance, you know, he he can, yeah. Let's just say Mario's body does not move the way Usher's does. Pause. Now I would say this was kind of the peak of Mario's career. After dropping that mega hit, he continued to drop music quite regularly. He even dropped some decent bangers and three more albums. But overall, he didn't have the reach that he had to start with. He also became embroiled in legal disputes and began to frequent the headlines more and more for negative reasons. This began around February of 2006 when he sued his then manager, Troy Patterson. Remember him? The producer that signed Mario when he was around 11 years old. 
Mario filed the suit, accusing his former manager and his production company, Third Street Music, of pocketing hundreds of thousands of dollars from his record sales. Mario claimed that he had only received about $50,000 for the sale of more than 3 million records at that point and asked the courts to release him from the contracts he had signed with Third Street as he had only been a minor at the time of the signing. He claimed that the sales would have generated about $20 million for J Records. However, Patterson countersued, defending his role in Mario's career and alleging interference from others, including Mario's mother. The high-profile dispute involving several industry figures was settled privately around 2007, with Mario appointing a new manager, Jay Irving. Following all the legal drama, Mario dropped album number 3, which was originally supposed to come out around November of 2006. The album was pushed back about 6 times before finally dropping as Go around December of 2007. Mario shared that the delays were due to legal situations, which makes sense, and when it finally arrived, it was in the form of a dedication to his mother. Thanks to all the lawsuits, Mario actually had far more control over the project than its predecessors, and that might be why it ultimately was not successful. The album arrived at number 21 on the Billboard 200 and received no certifications from the RIAA. Despite the sales, or lack thereof, the album was well received by the public. It spawned some singles. The first was How Do I Breathe, the second single was Crying Out For Me, and the last two are Music For Love and the promotional single Do Right. Do Right was a song co-written by Mario for his mother about her substance abuse. The song also inspired him to begin the Do Right Project or Mario Do Right Project. See, I've been there, and I've been scared. It was founded by Mario alongside Kevin Sherd around 2008 and aimed to educate the youth about substance abuse prevention. Up until this point, Mario was also trying his hand at acting. He was in the show One on One and Sabrina the Teenage Witch. He got small cameos in Uncle P and All of Us. However, his breakout role came around 2006 when he starred as Miles Darby in the popular dance movie Step Up. This really launched his acting career. Around 2007, he took on a more dramatic role in Freedom Writers. He also starred in an MTV documentary about his mother's heroin addiction and his efforts to help her. Then around 2008, Mario competed on Dancing with the Stars Season 6, making it to the top 5. Though finding success in acting and appearing on TV, after the show he took a break from Hollywood to refocus on his music career. By the time 2009 had rolled out, Mario was ready to drop album number 4. The last semi-successful album that he dropped, Mario began to work in it around 2007 and initially had the title selected as And Then There Was Me. Then around 2008, a track was leaked onto the internet titled Emergency Room. Then around October of 2009, after multiple delays, Mario dropped album number 4 called DNA. Upon its debut, DNA seemed to be on the path to commercial success, peaking at number 9 on the Billboard 200. Then about the very next week, it had dropped 31 spots to number 40 and quickly began losing momentum. However, it spawned a couple of singles like Breakup, Thinking About You, Stranded, and Ooh Baby. The first two songs got a little bit of buzz, and the last two, well, were forgotten. Break Up was the first single released, and featured the rappers Gucci Mane and Sean Garrett. This song was his most successful song in about five years, and eventually it went platinum. Now around 2010-2011, things took a turn for the worse in Mario's career and personal life. He was working on an album called Restoration with producer Rico Love, but it was later scrapped. 
Throughout 2010, Mario made many negative headlines, which some fans blamed on his new relationship with Amber Rose's friend, Dez. This caused issues because Dez was his manager's ex-girlfriend, leading his manager to terminate their partnership. As if this was not enough, Mario and his girl Dez were in a public fight where glasses were thrown. Then during a performance, Mario exceeded his stage time but kept performing. And when the engineer cut the power, Mario allegedly punched him. He was escorted out and luckily he was not arrested. Now speaking of getting arrested, around 2010, Mario got arrested for allegedly pushing his mother who was struggling with addiction into a wall during two separate incidents. Police allegedly found broken glass and holes in the walls of their apartment. He paid $50,000 in bail, but charges were eventually dropped because his mother claimed the entire story was fabricated. Overall, 2010 marked a very low point for Mario between album issues, a tumultuous relationship, assault incidents, and family struggles. By 2011, Mario was turning over a new leaf. He had ditched Dez and scrapped the album with Rico Love, and now he was turning his attention to his new album. Unfortunately, right when he decided on his next course of action, his label was reshuffled. And around August of 2011, Mario's label of over a decade, J Records, was disbanded by its parent label RCA Music Group along with Arista and Jive Records. All the artists were then moved from their old labels to RCA Records, through which all future albums would be released. While all the legalities were going on, Mario decided that it was the perfect time to return to acting. He landed a role in the musical film Destination Fame as Wizzy, while simultaneously working on his next album. The album was supposed to be called Evolve. The first single came out around 2013, titled Somebody Else featuring Nicki Minaj. However, it was not a big success. Make me feel like you are my everything. Make me think you was perfect. The next single released was Fatal Distraction. It was written about Dez. However, soon after the second single was dropped, Mario parted ways with RCA, citing creative differences, and Evolve never saw the light of day. For Mario, that was the beginning of the end. In 2014, he returned to TV with an appearance in an episode of Love That Girl. He kept doing his TV thing and then announced another album. The album was supposed to be called Never Too Late, completely produced by Scott Storch. However, it was shelved and never saw the light of day. Although the song Forever with Rick Ross was released. Mario kept dropping singles here and there, trying to see if anything would stick. And then around 2018, things changed. Mario decided it was time to fire. He then dropped album number 5 called Dancing Shadows. Now, the album was not successful. It was Mario's first album through his own label and was the first to feature his own songwriting on every track. Of its three singles, Drowning, Dancing Shadows, and Care For You, only the first charted. The same year, he became a recurring character in season 5 of the hit Fox show, Empire, and in season 6, he joined the main cast. He remained on the show until it finished airing around 2020. Mario then dropped a couple of singles, he dropped an EP, and then got into another altercation with his family. Around 2020, police were called to Mario's home, which he shared with his mother and brother, and were informed that Mario had assaulted both members. He was then arrested, charged with second degree assault, and was released on $50,000 bail. Once again, Omarion's mother denied the entire thing, causing the entire situation to go away. Today, Mario is still very active in the industry. Around 2021, he dropped the singles Luxury Love and Get Back with Chris Brown, the latter of which is supposed to appear on album number 6, which is yet to be titled. Then around 2022, he dropped a main one with Tory Lanez. And he also dropped a song around 2023 called 
used to me with Ty Dolla Sign. Mario still performs regularly and his most recent beef was a 2022 spicy Twitter feud with none other than Marion. The duo competed in a versus battle which saw Mario win according to the fans, especially after Omarion's vocals were dodgy. Following the performance, Mario posted a casket and tagged Omarion. Omarion then responded with a lengthy caption on his Insta. Omarion went in on Mario, saying things like, Looking forward to our next performance on July 29th at the MGM Grand Harbor in Washington DC where you will open up for me per usual. Mario kind of steered clear of retaliation for the most part until Omarion got on an interview and said the following. Mario's people were representing the sound in the beginning, so, you know, there could have been some level of sabotage there. At this, Mario could not keep his mouth shut anymore. He took to IG to respond, saying the following. This guy, man. How can someone sabotage your vocal cords, bro? Stop smoking, bruv. That's it, fam. Some artists can't do that. You're not one of them. I apologize to my team for these atrocious accusations. Listen, I didn't have the best vocals that night, but I refuse to blame anyone. You had them watermelon seeds stuck in your windpipes. Leave Rio out of it. So that's essentially the story of Mario. He dropped one huge song, but he wasn't able to recapture the magic of that song and replicate it for future releases. Nevertheless, the man had an amazing career, he dropped a lot of projects, and he gets about 7.2 million monthly listeners on Spotify. And his most listened to songs are Let Me Love You, How Do I Breathe, Just a Friend, Used to Me, and Like Her Too. That's it for me, it's your boy Ali. What happened to Mario in your opinion? Let me know down below. Also add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music till next time. Peace.